हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई पंकज दुमका वेलकम यू ऑल इन दिस लेसन ऑन फ्लूड मैकेनिक्स टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट एंगुलर डिफॉर्मेशन ऑफ फ्लूड एलिमेंट्स हाउ एंगुलर डिफॉर्मेशन कम्स इनटू एक्जिस्टेंस एंड हाउ व्हाट इज एंगुलर डिफॉर्मेशन रेट हाउ टू इवेल्यूएट इट दैट ऑल विल बी डिस्कस्ड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक नाउ लेक्चर सो लेट एस स्टार्ट सो इन द प्रीवियस केस इन द लास्ट लेक्चर आई हैव एक्सप्लेन यू व्हाट विल हैपन इफ द फ्लो फील्ड इज यूनिफॉर्म दैट इज प्योर ट्रांसलेशन एंड इफ द वेलोसिटी कंपोनेंट्स इन स्पेसिफिक डायरेक्शंस आर फंक्शंस ऑफ दैट डायरेक्शन ओनली दैट इज लीनियर डिफॉर्मेशन विल कम इनटू पिक्चर नाउ लेट अस केस कंसीडर द केस सी दैट इज द थर्ड केस इन विच दिलोसिटी कंपोनेंट्स आर नॉट ओनली फंक्शन ऑफ एक्स दैट इज द डायरेक्शन इन विच दे आर डिफाइंड बट इन अनदर डायरेक्शन ऑल्सो दैट इज यू इज अ फंक्शन ऑफ एक्स एंड वाई एंड वी इज ऑल्सो अ फंक्शन ऑफ एक्स एंड वाई नाउ इन दिस टू डायमेंशनल फ्लो फील्ड इफ यू कंसिडर द एलिमेंट देन लेट से दिस इज द एलिमेंट okay now uh, say that this is a b and c and d let's say that the velocity at point a is u and v then after a distance delta x the x component of velocity will be changed by u plus del u by del x delta x and the y component will be changing by v plus del v by del x delta x why because the uh, velocities are not only changing in x direction but they are also changing in y direction so both dependency on x and y is there likewise if you move from point a to point d for this small distance delta y this point d will be having the x direction velocity as u plus del u by del y delta y and y direction velocity as v plus del v by del y delta y okay now the thing which you can appreciate from this particular explanation is that that all the points along ab they will be having this ability to move relative to it not only in the horizontal direction but also in the vertical direction because of the presence of this velocity change and hence this b will not only move in this direction but it all also move in this direction therefore this line ab will no more parallelly shift instead it will get a tilt the same thing happens at d also as this point d is having a velocity with respect to a not only in this direction but also in this horizontal direction therefore this point d will not only move in vertical direction but also in horizontal therefore this line ad will move get a tilt in this direction hence what will happen the angle the included angle which is 90 degree in this case will now change so to understand this to understand this let us say that in time delta t the point a has traveled by some distance let us say this that is u delta t and at the same time this has traveled by the distance v delta t so this is your point a now what will happen because of the motion of point b not only in horizontal but in vertical direction this point b will be somewhere here let us say so the element now has become this okay so this is now your new b location and if you try to find out that this particular uh, position of b let us say this from here to here this distance will be u plus del u by del x delta x delta t and this vertical motion of this point b will be what this will be v plus del v by del x delta x delta t okay now you can very well appreciate the fact if this is your original element 
okay then the point has moved horizontally by a distance of del u by del x delta x delta t with respect to point a whereas the point b has moved by a distance of del v by del x delta x delta t vertically with respect with respect to point a the similar thing can be uh, seen for this point d as well because d is having a relative velocity with respect to a not only in horizontal vertical direction but also in horizontal so therefore it will be moving vertically and then horizontally as well therefore the new location can be thought of as let us say this is the new location of point d and ultimately the element okay so what is this distance the point d has moved by a horizontal distance of how much uh, horizontal velocity is this so it is u plus del u by del y delta y delta t and it has moved by a vertical distance it has moved by a vertical distance of v plus del v by del y delta y delta t so the point has moved point d has moved uh, uh, horizontally by this distance with respect to a which is what which is del u by del y delta y delta t and vertically it has moved by this distance which is del v by uh, delta y uh, del y delta y delta t okay so if you look very closely initially the angle was 90 degree but the angle now has changed how much it has changed that is what we call as deformation so if this angle a small angle let us say is delta alpha and this angle is delta beta then the angle now is this angle this angle will be what this angle will be pi by 2 minus delta alpha plus delta beta that is the angle changed but previously it was pi by 2 so what is the change in angle the change in angle will be pi by 2 minus pi by 2 minus delta alpha plus delta beta so if we solve this the change in angle will come out as delta alpha plus delta beta okay now what what has happened the point has moved in upward direction and the line ab has stretched that means it has moved in horizontally and vertically likewise point d has also moved so this motion has given the element a sense of deformation and that deformation is represented by this delta alpha plus delta beta so here we define few terms like uh, rate of angular deformation mm, this is rate of shear deformation because this is the change in the angle deformation or sometimes called as mm, rate of angular deformation so what is this rate of angular deformation of rate of shear deformation it is the rate of change of total angle between two linear segments two linear segments uh, of any fluid element of a fluid element let us say which were originally perpendicular so this is basically 
the rate of shear deformation is defined as the change that the change in the rate of angles between two linear perpendicular elements so in this case ab and ad were these perpendicular elements and how much the angle between these has changed is what we call as the angular deformation rate at what rate that is changing so if you can say then the change in angle this change in angle is what delta alpha plus delta beta so in a time delta t this change in angle will be this is the average of this so in a limit when this time is tending to zero when the when the uh, element has just moved so this simply becomes d alpha by dt and this becomes d beta by dt so the task here is to find out this and as this is xy plane so we define or we represent this angular deformation rate in this xy plane as d alpha by dt plus d beta by dt so the question is how to find out this d alpha by dt and d beta by dt so to make this thing clear uh, let us say this is a b and uh, c d let us say this is e okay and this is f so if you look the triangle this triangle closely okay then this length is what this length is delta x okay now what is the tan of this uh, delta alpha tan is uh, tan of this delta alpha will be be by ae oh, be by ae okay now what is ae a e is af plus fe so this can be written as af plus fe okay now we have to replace the value of d in these terms so and this tan of delta alpha will then be equal to what is uh, this be be is del v by del x delta x delta t okay so it is del v by del x delta x delta t and what is other term that is af af is delta x and fe is del u by del x delta x delta t so it is delta x plus del u by del x delta x delta t so if you solve this then this delta x is getting cancelled and you can write this thing as delta t times 1 plus you can bring this up upward del u by del x delta t inverse to be power minus 1 basically so if you expand this del v by del x delta t this will be 1 minus del u by del x delta t plus del u by del x square delta t square that means higher order terms so this is higher order terms containing delta t square and above so which can be neglected because the time span is considered ultimately to be very small so we can multiply this thing inside so this is del v by del x delta t minus del v by del x times del u by del x again this is delta t square again we are talking of delta t as very small so delta t square will be very very small so when delta t is very small this alpha will also be small so this is simply delta alpha and then you can neglect this term also therefore the change in alpha angle to that of time will be del v by del x and in a limit when this time tend to zero this becomes d alpha by dt which is del v by del x if you solve for another angle that is this one so let us say this is a this is d and f let us say this is g this point is g and this is h so a h is what this is delta y okay and g h is what g h is this so if you solve for this value that is tan delta beta let me just write tan of delta beta 
that will be equal to what that will be um, equal to del u by del y delta y delta t divided by delta y plus del v by del y delta y delta t and if you follow the same procedure as this then you will getting you will be getting ultimately that db by dt is equal to del u by del y okay therefore the rate of angular deformation or the uh, rate of shear deformation in this plane xy that is gamma dot xy will come out which is equal to d alpha by dt plus d beta by dt will come out as del v by del x plus del u by del y okay and in another planes if we are talking of say let us say y z plane then what it should be you needn't have to memorize this you just have to follow a proper sense of rotation that is if this is x this is y and this is z and you are in x z plane so you simply write del sorry you are in let us say y z plane you simply write del y del by del y plus del by del z okay now y is here so velocity in the direction of y v will come here and z is here so w will come here by z component of velocity likewise gamma dot this is y z now let us say z x plane this will be del by del z plus del by del x as z is here so its velocity will come here and as x is here so velocity will come here that is u so therefore in this way you can find out that how much deformation or is there in the fluid element and what is the rate at which the fluid element is being deformed okay so in this lecture till this point only in the next lecture i will be discussing with you about the rotation how rotation comes into play and uh, as well as i will be telling you about a basic of uh, vorticity how, what is vorticity and then in the following lecture which will be following the next lecture i will be deriving that rotation now in the next lecture the derivation will be on uh, will be on xy plane that is in cart rectangular cartesian coordinates whereas in the next to next lecture the 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 derivation will be on cylindrical coordinates so please watch that that is a very important one and uh, you will be able to get a glimpse of uh, these uh, cylindrical coordinates there as well so thank you very much for watching my video if you liked it then please do like share and subscribe thank you very much take care